here is a scenario for you. We have a processing window. We have a mover object. It's a nice little friendly little circle that we've drawn in that processing window, and that mover object has a location vector. Right? We know the location vector. We can think of it as a vector that points from the origin to that object's location, which is some x, y location on the screen. Now, we know that object has a location. We know it has a velocity. And we're adding this piece acceleration. That's what we did in the last video. But we looked at a constant acceleration, a random acceleration. We gave some suggestions, ideas. In this video, we are going to look at an acceleration, I have a scratch, <laughs> that always points in the direction of the mouse. So let's draw our mouse uh, arrow. I'm spending way too much time drawing this mouse arrow. And this, that right there is our acceleration. This is something we have to compute each and every frame because the relationship between the object location and the mouse changes. The user is moving the mouse, the object is moving. So every frame we have to calculate a vector that points from the location to the mouse. So how do we do that? Thinking, thinking, are you thinking? I'm thinking, I already know the answer because I, I thought about this in advance. We need subtraction. Am I recording? I'm recording. Excellent. We need subtraction. So first we need two things. One is we're in the mover class, presumably. We know we have a p vector called location. So this we can just assume exists. It exists. It is the p vector location. Now, we're in some function. Maybe this function is called update. And this is where we're going to calculate our acceleration. At the very, very end of this function, we want to set the value of acceleration to something, a vector that points from the location to the mouse. So how do we do that? Well, the first thing we need to do is establish the mouse's location as a vector. The mouse's location is a vector. So we can create one, p vector mouse, right, is a new p vector. And what are its values? Mouse x comma mouse y. Oh, no. OK, so we have a new p vector called mouse, which has a location mouse x comma mouse y. Awesome. We already have location, boom, because we're in the mover class with a location variable. Now we just created mouse. How do we get a vector that points from one location to another? That a vector that points from one location to another is the difference between those two locations. The difference between two vectors, um, the, the mouse minus location is the vector that points from location to mouse. We went through this in a video about vector math and addition and subtraction. I, I think I kind of botched it, which is why I don't want to do it again. But if you're confused by that, go back and try to watch that video. And then uh, send me your complaint letters to um, PO Box something or other, whatever. <laughs> I don't know. I hate the regular mail. That's another story for another time. So we just can do something much simpler here. We can just say mouse dot subtract location. And this vector that we called mouse is now a vector that points all the way from here to there. All right, that's pretty good. Why don't we go ahead and add that into our code? Ah, no. <laughs> I want to, I want to, uh, but it's not the right time. What's the problem here? Let's, let's kind of, let's for a moment, Bear with me. We're going to redraw this diagram again. OK, we have the object's location. That's represented by that circle. We have the object's, we have the mouse location as represented by that arrow. Let us now visually represent the vector we've calculated here as the mouse location minus the object's actual location. Does that vector make sense for acceleration? Oh. I will ask you it in a different way. Is it your goal to simulate the process of teleportation? Right? If we say, if I want to get from here all the way to where the camera is, which would be a bad idea because then I'd walk into the camera and that would be weird and bump into it and fall over or whatever. But if I want to get from here all the way to another point, if I accelerate with a magnitude of the distance between where I am and that point, it's like I'm kind of getting, going instantly there. No, we want to create a simulation which appears kind of lifelike and improvisational. These are terms we're going to use. We're especially going to see those when we get to steering behaviors later. Um, so we don't want to accelerate with such a large magnitude. That will not be a very satisfying uh, visual experience for us to watch on the screen. So we need to reduce this magnitude to something. So there are lots of different ways we could do that. 
I could say mouse dot multiply 0.1. So I would reduce the magnitude to 0.1. Or I might say normalize the mouse, normalize the vector to unit one, and then scale accordingly. Or even just as a simple thing right now, I could say set magnitude to 0.5, some arbitrary value. So look how simple this was. All we needed to do, because we have this physics engine of acceleration into velocity, velocity into location, we already have all of the sort of ground, the groundwork for motion done. All we've done is created a really simple algorithm for calculating acceleration as where is the mouse? What's the difference between the mouse and where I currently am? Make that a vector, set its magnitude to this, and then I want to put an exclamation point here, although you can't put that in your code. Acceleration equals that vector. It's really as easy as that now that we have this foundation. So let us walk over to our example. Do 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 do. Okay, and let's look at where we are. But first, let's run this just so we remember. What's it doing right now? This is the random acceleration. So it's moving every frame with some random acceleration, and we can see that in our code right down here. This is random acceleration. Random acceleration. Now. We're going to adjust this, and we're going to do exactly, we're going to rewrite what we did over here. Right? See that? We're going to put that uh, over here. <laughs> we're going to do it together. OK, so first, we need a p vector named mouse, which is the mouse's location. Then we need to subtract the object's actual location. Then we want to set its magnitude to, I don't know, we pick 0.5 and say acceleration equals mouse. Let's run this, and look at this. I now have an object that is following the mouse, and if I let the mouse just stop here in the center, you can see it's kind of hovering around it. Now, one thing, we, we, one thing that's important about this to realize is we still have this velocity.limit5. So we had a little safety net built in. We don't actually know if our acceleration value is really reasonable. So let's act, just out of, just out of, I really should just end this video right now because I finally did one that's only seven minutes long. But let's just take a minute to just take a look at what happens here. We can see like, whoa. Okay, so first of all, something sort of funny. Now that we have this kind of scenario where we want this thing following the mouse, it doesn't really make sense for it when it goes to the top to come back in the bottom. You can see it's spiraling out of control. So one thing that's really nice about the way that we built this sketch is we have update edges and display in separate methods. So we can just turn off that wraparound on the edges very easily and see what's happening here. Oh, come back. Now look at this. That acceleration is so strong <laughs> that it's kind of, we need a much bigger window to see what's happening. So you can see the value of kind of limiting a velocity. We could also say uh, maybe that magnitude was kind of very large. Let's set it to 0 0.02 and you can see ah, now we have something maybe a little bit more reasonable. It's kind of like speeding up and we have this sort of orbiting thing. It's very similar to what gravitational attraction might seem like. But I kind of like having that limit in there. I like having it a little bit stronger. So anyway, this is up to you now to tune this and to sort of figure out what's going to kind of make the most sense for what you're trying to do. But you can see now, if you ever wanted to have something follow the mouse, this is something following the mouse with this kind of acceleration model. There's a few things about this that I think would be uh, worth noting. Number one is the magnitude of the acceleration is fixed. Maybe you want to think about a scenario where the closer it is to the mouse, the stronger that acceleration or the weaker that acceleration. So is it stronger when it's far away or stronger when it's close? In fact, when we see gravitational attraction, that is a perfect scenario of this, right? The formula of gravity, the, the force of gravity, the magnitude of the force of gravity is inversely proportional to the distance. Bodies that are farther away experience much less gravitational attraction than bodies that are close. Look, I have some clementines here. <laughs> so these, gravity weaker, gravity stronger. Weaker, stronger. In our case, Force, the acceleration is the same, acceleration is the same. Maybe you want it to slow down when it gets near there. Maybe you want it to, there's all, maybe you want to add, see if you can add some random acceleration along with the acceleration towards the mouse. There's lots that you could do for this. But we're going we're gonna to formalize all of this into a more, um, and see, <laughs> I'm going to finish what I'm saying. What you should look at doing right now is creating a motion simulation where you control acceleration only. We said this in the last video. I'm saying it again. Keep going with that model. In the next series of videos, we're going to, we're going to, we're going to say, ah, acceleration. That is, when, we, when we are controlling an object's acceleration, we're really applying forces to that object. And we're going to have a specific model for applying multiple forces to that object. That's where we're going from here. And that's what we're going to see in the next video.
goodbye. <laughs>